Hey there folks, it's Matthew Seville here with SLRLounge.com and another episode of Weekly Edit for you all. In today's episode, we're going to work exclusively in Lightroom and do all of our editing using Lightroom presets. Now, what I want to go for is I, uh, I want to talk about vintage processing and faded processing, but in this type of environment here where we have water, a cool, dark, you know, evening, and this is the type of situation that just doesn't lend itself to the usual vintage processing that is usually, you know, warm afternoon with bright sun and that kind of stuff. This is definitely a very cool image and a very dark and moody image. So how would I process it to uh, be, you know, a vintage style? Well, let me hit L here to get out of the light box mode or whatever L stands for. And here we are in the develop module. I've got all my presets here on the left hand side. And when I approach an image with presets, I've got lots of folders here. I've got some personal folders. I've got the SLO Lounge preset system here. When I approach an image using presets, I like to do so with all of these folders closed. And let's hit reset here just one more time just to be sure that nothing is applied to this image. What I like to do is I like to open each folder one by one and just click the presets that, uh, that I need so that I'm not too overwhelmed by having hundreds of fingertips, I mean hundreds of, finger, uh, hundreds of presets at my fingertips. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the base soft presets because this is a portrait image. I almost always will start with the base soft presets because they have a, usually a little bit of negative clarity to kind of smooth skin tones and that kind of stuff. Now because this image has very blown out, let me hit J here so we can see the highlights. Yes, the highlights are blown out. I've got some nearly black shadows here. I'm definitely going to want to use one of the HDR presets on this image. I'm going to try HDR Heavy Skin Desat and see what that does. And I'm going to try HDR Max Skin Desat to see what that does. I like, well it's hard to tell which one? Oh, HDR, I don't want to do black and white. It's hard to tell which of these works because the image is obviously overexposed. So I'm going to close this and I'm going to just go down here to my exposure and I'm just going to try it at negative one. See, all of a sudden, this looks a lot better. Now, let's go back to the base soft presets and see we've got HDR max here and we've got HDR medium here. Now it's much more clear that HDR Max Skin Desat is the preset that I want. It's definitely getting all of the tones here quite nearly perfect. And I could do a little bit of white balance correction, but I actually like the cool, slightly magenta look that's going on here. So let's move on to the next step of the process. Well, the next step for me seems to be that I need to do a little bit of cropping and I'm going to just crop in a tiny bit to kind of bring them a little bit more to the center. But really, this is subjective. I could imagine, you know, a cool crop being like this, like this, like this, like this. Oh, they're a little bit centered there. Maybe I'm going to go right here like that and call that. I'm going to hit enter. I'm going to call that good. Let's hide the information here. The, my Nikon D700, the 24 to 70, 2.8. Uh, this was at a, a 20th of a second at f2.8 and ISO 3200. What I have here, let's just talk about the image really quick. I have a flash directly behind them set up on a light stand with the legs pointed very very sharply down so that it's not getting wet and then I have another flash over here behind my camera shining on their faces and that's how this image was created in case you were uh, wondering and if I look through here with the other images you can see it was uh, the uh, water that was sparkling in this particular photo is not drops of water on my camera lens, thankfully. It is just the sparkle of the water splashing around here and being illuminated by the flashes and everything. So that's why I, I like this image here. This is my favorite image. It's got that Pandora.com or Owl City type look going on to it, something like that. I just really like the, the dots everywhere. I do notice, however, that I've got a few boca dots. Oh, boca dots, oh my goodness, okay. I swear that was no pun intended. I'm gonna hit Q to get my brush, my clone stamp thing, and I'm just gonna remove this one boca dot here, and uh, maybe this one here. I don't really need to do too much. 
Obviously, I could get very carried away very quickly with these dots because they're in a lot of the bokeh. But just that one right there was annoying me. So I'm going to hit enter. I'm going to hit enter again so that I get out of that. Now this looks a lot better. It's not distracting me. Obviously, if you're really OCD, you could try and remove a lot more of them, but this looks great for now. The next thing I want to do is I want to close my presets and go down along the line to the vignetting because I feel like it could be a little bit more, you know, centralized, the focus of the image. So I'm going to do a post crop vignette. Let's try radial medium. Let's also try square medium and see how that behaves. Radial medium and square medium are very similar, but it looks like the radial is going to be better. Radial means circle, basically, and uh, it's going to give it just more of a circular vignette. Let's try radial light. Actually, because this is a dark, moody photo, radial medium works great. I could also try radial heavy. Remember, one of my rules of thumbs is try too much, dial it too far, and then dial it back. That's how you know you're in the right spot with regards to your processing. So now I know for a fact that I really like radial medium as the perfect balance overall. And there we go. It looks like this image is pretty much done being processed. I really like the overall look to it. So then let's make a virtual copy. I'm going to hit control, uh, sla what is it, apostrophe? Yeah, control apostrophe or command apostrophe on a Mac to make a virtual copy and let's close this adjustment uh, folder and let's talk about how to do a vintage faded processing for this type of image. Well obviously like I said this isn't late afternoon with lots of sunlight so I don't want to use a neutral or a warm vintage look. I'm going to open my cool curves folder here and I'm just going to go down the line and demonstrate what it would look like if I were to process it. The bright washes are going to do something that brightens it up a little bit and washes it out and fades it a little bit. Neutral washes are going to do something similar, but they're going to do it in a balanced way. They're not going to brighten it up a lot. Then neutral punches are going, again, to do the same teal, azure, violet, cool cross. They're going to do the same styles, but in a more punchy way and less of a faded way. Same thing with the vintage punches. They're going to add a little bit of a cross type processing look to the image, but they're going to uh, make it again punch. And then last but not least, you've got the dark washes that are going to obviously darken the image and wash it. Now, having gone through all of those, I feel like my favorite were the neutral punches. Let's see, cool cross or the vintage punches like this. This looks great right here. You can see it's a very subtle difference but the cool cross is going to fade those highlights just a little bit, the vintage punches, versus the neutral punches, which kind of let it blow out to pure white. So I like the vintage ones because I want this to be a little bit less distracting. So let's try the cool cross vintage punch, and let's also try the magenta, I mean violet. Because this image already has such awesome magenta tones, the violet vintage punch is going to look really awesome for this image. So let's go back and forth. Here's the unprocessed, I mean, here's the correctly processed, but unfaded or uncross processed version. And then here is the cross processed version. I really like both of these, but honestly, this one looks so neutral now that I really like this one instead. So you know what I might do? I might go back to this original one and I might do one of those bright washes. Again, I like the violet. I really like this look and this look. And maybe I would deliver to a client all three looks, you know, the original unprocessed one. Let me make another virtual copy for this one. And let's go back to this original one and use the history to go back to uh, just before I added that processing. So I have this one, the normal one, and then the faded one, and then the vintage processed one. All three of these images are looking pretty awesome. And I think they suit the mood very well, this cool, dark mood here. You know, we're playing in the fountain. It's kind of romantic, kind of fun. I think the processing suits the image very well. And we did the entire processing with presets alone. Now, speaking of presets, I may be for this dark one, I may want to hit my gradient brushes and do just a little bit of a brighten preset gradient across the top here just to get a little bit more brightness in here. Let's show you what that would look like. Hide, reveal, yeah. 
I like this just a little bit brighter. I'm gonna hit enter and that looks great right there. All right, folks, thank you so much for tuning in and take care.